Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. I have an awesome topic to share with you today. It's a vlog topic that I've been like holding on to since I first heard of it. I knew that I would shoot this video and I'm totally excited to share this idea with you. It came up recently on a Brightline Eating all team call. So this is something we do about once a month and the whole team, which is all virtual, we don't have a single uh, office space in Brightline Eating. We all work from home or from Starbucks or from wherever on our laptops, from wherever we wanna work. And um, so, you know, we spend some time once a month to actually get together in a video conference room. And it's, you know, it's mostly just to catch up with each other. So usually what we do is we spend the first like good chunk of time, maybe hour and a half going around and everybody, you know, um, talks for a bit. Like, uh, I'll give them a sentence stem to complete. So it might be like, uh, the three wins, gratitudes or celebrations that are most on my mind, uh, you know, since the last time we were together are, and then the one biggest challenge that's up for me right now is, or something like that. So anyway, um, on our last all team call, Sans Sua, who is, um, our social media person, uh, well, she's a, she's a, a helper supporter to Lori Lang, who was our social media person. So they do social media together, Sans and Lori. Sans, um, does Brightline Eating. She started her Brightline Eating journey on her own, read the book, and now like 30 or 50 or some odd of her friends and family are all doing Brightline Eating and she's just rocking her right size body and she's model gorgeous and, um, she's an Instagram influencer. Like she's just on her own, built up this following on Instagram. Instagram, talking about bright line eating. When we flew her to Rochester to my house, because David and I never hire anybody without meeting them in person. It's one of our sort of hard and fast rules. Um, we were talking and I, I was surprised to hear she hadn't done the boot camp. And she was like, the boot camp? And I was like, she's like, there's, there's a boot camp? What is that? <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? She's like, I just read the book. I didn't know there was anything. And I was like, oh, you're so amazing. Okay. Um, so anyway, I, I adore this girl. She's fabulous. Uh, sweet, sweet, sweet mother of four. And, um, she shared one of her wins, um, or celebrations, which is she's rocking her goal body, not goal weight. She's like, you know, I'm tall. And I was kind of like, looking at the number, thinking, can this be my goal weight? It doesn't seem like a low enough number. And then she's like, I just switched that around to say, how do I want to feel in my body? What do I want my body to be able to do? And I realized that like the body I'm in right now is meeting all of those criteria. Like it ticks every box. I'm in my goal body. So let the number be what the number is, right? Like who cares about that number? I look good. I feel good. And she started listing off all the things. And I was like, what a brilliant idea. Not goal weight, goal body, goal body. How do you want to feel in your body? I love it. And I started to think about that even more over the next few weeks. Cause sometimes when I coach people, they get into such a focus. And I do this too. Sometimes I'm guilty too we get into such a focus about that number, trying to make the number fit into the box that we have prescribed for that number, that we're actually willing to sacrifice the goal body to hit the goal weight. And it's like, well, pff, what, what sense does that make? Like why, for example, let's just spin a, spin a scenario. All right, talk about me. Okay. So, um, my goal weight, I'm five, three and my goal weight range is one, 109 to 114. It's pretty light. Um, but I'm, I'm super slight. Like if you, you know, sometimes I have people put their fingers around their wrists to see like, are you big boned or small boned or medium? Like I'm tiny boned. My fingers, like over my wrist, my thumb covers all the way up to the first knuckle. Most people can't do that. Like my wrists are like, like pencils. Anyway. Um, so I'm slight. I'm not big boned. I used to think I was big boned. Um, I was not big boned. I was just fat. <laughs> now I know I'm not big boned. I'm slight. 
And um, so that's my number range. Now, I shot a vlog um, a while back. It might be called something like letting go of the number. And it was when, you know, I went through a, a, a period of time, a year or two, where my body was like, no, Susan, I'm not weighing that. Like, you have this number in your mind. No, that's not where we're comfortable. We're going to weigh quite a bit more than that. You know, whatever it is, five, seven, eight, nine pounds more than that. That number you have in your mind is not, you know, I was still rocking my size four jeans, feeling fine. Um, but, you know, I had to get down to the goal weight plan. I mean, the weight loss plan. And I wasn't losing weight anymore. Like I was just stalled out on the weight loss plan. So I ate the weight loss plan for years at maintenance. Some of us have to do that. Like if your metabolism is kind of, you know, not super revy, um, then the weight loss plan might be your maintenance plan. That was the case for me for a few years. Now it, it didn't used to be that way, but that was, that was where I was at. So I was on the weight loss plan for years and above my goal weight number. Still in the same clothes. There was actually no evidence on the outside that anything was really different, right? So, um, here's, here's the rub, right? Would I, decrease my food plan even more to the point where I'm kind of running on fumes to get the number to behave? Or do I look at the notion of goal body and think, you know what, I'm actually in my goal body. There's there's no added benefit to getting that number any lower. There's no world in which anyone would think I would be actually more attractive. I I certainly wouldn't be more energetic. I would be less energetic if I took away more food. And, you know, I just started going down the list, right? So I see that in people that I coach sometimes, like the number's not cooperating and they want to like try to wrangle a certain number out of the scale. Um, and they're even willing to sacrifice some certain key goal body objectives in order to get the number to behave. So in this vlog, I want to invite us all to follow San Sua's footsteps, right? Follow in her footsteps and think like, what is our goal body? And so what Sans talked about, and her name, by the way, is I know it's a very unusual name. It's Sans, S-A-N-Z, Sans. Like, like it's pronounced kind of like S-A-N-D-S, Sans. Um, so Sands talked about doing some journaling on her goal body. And so I've been doing that and I've been thinking about it. So here's some examples of the components of my goal body. Um, well, like one of the key things is I don't want to have pain. I got two places in my body where I have um, chronic pain these days in my knees, in my right knee in particular, and in my left shoulder. I got a shoulder impingement and I got a right knee thing. What I got to do to not have pain is I got to do some physical therapy exercises. I got to basically tighten and strengthen my posterior chain and loosen uh, my front. Like I got to open my pecs. I got to um, loosen my hip flexors and I got to tighten my glutes and my um, back in particular, right? That's basically what it takes to strengthen your knees um, and protect your shoulders. And um, so it's like, it's a lot of like, Weightlifting, but not sexy weightlifting. It's sort of like the, you know, like rows, you know, and, um, and glute bridges and things like that. Kettlebell swings. Um, yeah, but for me, like walking up and down stairs with no pain in my knee, stretching in the morning with no pain in my shoulder, that's goal body stuff. Like, I don't want to have pain. I'm 44 years old, right? Like, yeah, I don't want to have pain. Not to say that there's any age where it feels great to have pain. <laughs> I don't know what my age has anything to do with that. Nothing. Okay, moving on. Um, another goal body thing is I want to, okay, this is like serious. I want to be able to do a hot yoga power vinyasa class all the way through without having to rest at times when the teacher is not inviting you to rest, <laughs> like to actually do the whole class. I can't do that right now. Like not even close. I can do maybe 60% of it, but I'm like, I'm in child's pose and they're all doing warrior one. And I'm like, okay, I, I did some warrior one. And like the teacher's having us hold that for a really long time, in my opinion. And now I'm in child's pose. Um, and 
when I first started, I don't do yoga regularly at the moment. My husband has started doing yoga regularly. I'm so stoked for him and it's awesome to watch him do it, but I'm not doing it regularly. Uh, which I know, yes, is what I will need to do to be able to hit this goal body objective. Um, but like when I first went to a couple yoga classes a year or two ago, um, I was like, this is really hard, <laughs> like really hard. You think of yoga as being all like, um, and you know, just, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's some serious athleticism right there. Anyone who can finish one of those classes, like, and do it all the way through. Oh, hats off to you. So that's a goal body thing for me. I personally would love to be able to jog for an hour at a, at, for me, what's a pretty decent clip, which would be about the equivalent of like, uh, five miles an hour or six miles an hour on a treadmill. Like six would be really fast, actually five, five and a half steady for an hour, you know, up some hills and down some hills. I ran a marathon in 2001. Um, I'm, I'm not like, uh, jogging isn't really my thing, but I kind of like it. And I, especially with good tunes on and especially when I visit a new city, like going out jogging in the morning just to like check it out. Um, I kind of like that. And I know from past experience that if I'm jogging, you know, semi regularly, I can build up to an hour. Um, so that's a goal body thing and feeling like where sometimes I hit that stride where there's a little bit of like, spread in my pace and wind in my hair and I feel like I'm flying a little bit. That's a goal body thing for me. Okay. My number one goal body thing is, um, I want to be able to do a pull up before I die. One pull up, just one, just one. I am so far for being able to do a pull up right now. Let me tell you where I'm at. If I go to the gym where they have this machine where you kneel onto something and then try to do a pull up from there and you can put, uh, set the plates to like support your weight, like offset your weight a little bit. Um, I think, um, you know, I right now, like, what did I weigh this morning? I weighed whatever, 113 and a half pounds. I had to like <laughs> offset like 60 pounds, like almost half my weight to be able to do a pull up. So I got a ways to go. Like I'm not close. My daughter, Zoe, who's 10, um, did 200 pull ups in one two hours span of time, 200 pull-ups. My dad, who's 78, can do three sets of 20 pull-ups. Yeah, I can't do a pull-up. So I would love, I've never done a pull-up, not even close. For me, being able to do a pull-up would represent uh, a level of focus and, and commitment and like kind of self-care because in the past I've set the goal of being able to do a pull-up. I've worked with trainers who are like, oh yeah, we'll get to doing a pull-up within three months. Easy. And, um, but I've always gotten injured before I've gotten there. Um, I was like, there's something about like, I was doing spinning class too. And I injured my neck, like the, the pull-up training and the spinning class combined. Anyway, I injured my shoulder, injured my neck. So I, I know now that if I were going to get serious to train, to be able to do a pull up, I would need to be doing those shoulder rehab exercises and not spinning, not doing anything hunchy or crunched with my neck. And I would need to really probably do a lot of yoga and stretching and take care of myself, um, so that I could progress through the strength training without injuring myself and get to that point where I could do a pull up. I believe I could do it. Um, I think if I wait another 10 or 20 years, it's probably not going to happen. But if I hit it in this decade, I'll get there. Um, What else? Um, I want my metabolism to be healthy and vital. Um, I recently got to add food back into my plan and hit the standard women's maintenance plan for my food, which um, was awesome. Shows me that my body is like, you know, Um, I think coming out of the like, (laughs) uh, holy smokes phase of the first few years of the bright line eating movement, like that was an intense time in my life. And I think my Hashimoto's flared up and that's a thyroid issue. If you don't know, the thyroid regulates the metabolism. So there's a reason my metabolism was so slow. I have a autoimmune condition for that, whatever. But, um, yeah, so I want my, my metabolism to be robust I've always slept well. I'm grateful for that. 
Um, I'm just thinking about goal body things, right? Um, I want to be flexible I, and strong. Oh, posture is a big one for me. My posture is a little hunchy. My neck juts forward a little bit. Um, I want a strong enough back and core that like my ears naturally fall over my shoulders and my posture is good. I don't want to be, the older I get, I don't want to hunch more and more and more. And there's risk of that because I work over a computer, right? Do you see how none of this has to do with a number? Like the number is so irrelevant. And as a matter of fact, I know from recent experience where I started lifting weights quite a bit that um, I, I can put on seven, la- seven pounds of lean mass. If you, It's not all muscle. It's water in the muscle as well. Um, I can put on seven pounds of lean mass through just a couple months of weightlifting. And so those seven pounds show up on the scale. It's not like I've gained any fat. Hello, I've gained lean mass. I look amazing, more amazing when I lift weights, but the seven pounds show up on the scale. So thinking about the number at some point is like so besides the point, right? Like we all think we're trying to lose weight. We're actually not trying to lose weight. We're trying to lose fat, right? Um, trying to get leaner, um, and, you know, measuring our waist. There's other ways to track it. So letting go of a goal weight, focusing on a goal body. And um, if you're um, anywhere in your bright line eating journey, but especially at the beginning, I invite you to do some journaling about your goal body. What would it feel like to be in your goal body? I know that if I had answered that question early in my journey, with food before I'd lost my weight. I think the image that would have come to me is holiday time coming around and being able to go to my closet and pull out a form-fitting dress, like a long slinky dress and put it on and look and feel amazing in it and go to a holiday party and not be obsessed about what I look like, whether the rolls in my stomach are showing, how my arms look in the sleeves, blah, blah, blah. Actually look good, actually feel like I look good, feel confident, feel happy, and go to the party and not spend the whole evening obsessed about food and how I look. Feel proud, happy on my husband's arm as we meet new people, feeling like, you know, I represent, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, um, how do I put this? Feeling like my body is a good representation of who I am when I'm my highest self. That's the thing. See, it's really not about vanity and it's really not about what other people think about me. It's really not about looks. It's about alignment between my highest self that I envision in my most calm, confident core self and the body that I live in that's part and parcel of my experience on this earth that reflects what I'm doing with food, which is a big part of my relationship with myself. It's about how I feel in my skin. If I had been journaling about my goal body, that notion of going to a party and being able to put on clothes and show up to the party feeling good, like I am my highest self, that, that would have been the image. And I have been living that now for 15 years. This is my 16th holiday season able to put on any of the slinky dresses in my closet. And I I do now own about 10 or 12 of them. I've uh, collected them over the years. Uh, They all still fit. I can put on any one of them and rock up to a holiday party feeling amazing. And then all those other things that I just mentioned, like those are bucket list things for my goal body bucket list. I still have... um, like work that I can do to live even more in my goal body. So if you're new in your Brightline Eating journey or somewhere 
toward the beginning or wherever you're at, I invite you to write about the notion of your goal body. And, and remember, especially as you're cruising down to goal weight land, what we call landing the plane at maintenance, um, that it's not about a number. It really isn't. It's about an experience, a new experience of alignment. And the concept of goal body fits that notion so much better than the very threadbare, one-dimensional notion of goal weight, which eventually becomes more and more and more irrelevant. So post down below in the comments. I would love to hear what your reflections on goal body um, reveal because I think this is a construct that we should adopt into Bright Line Eating. Thank you, Sansua. It's such a great concept. And I can't wait to learn from you and from your meditations and your journaling on the idea of your goal body. And if you're starting your Bright Line Eating journey, I encourage you to write this. Like, you know, what would be um, the sign the, the many signs that you were in your goal body, how would you know? Like you could start the journal art entry with, I'll know I'm in my goal body when. I'll know I'm in my goal body when. And then let me know. Let us know what you come up with and save it because you can reflect back on it later as your saboteur is trying to hijack your thinking and tell you that, you know, the, the world is coming to an end because you haven't hit that number, right? I'll know I'm in my goal body when. Thanks, Sansua, for the amazing concept. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.